So how much can the Minnesota Vikings bridge the gap between them and the Green Bay Packers atop the NFC North? I mean, there's a lot to like about the Vikings. A lot. Anthony Barr is heading into his second year. Sheree Floyd, Everson Griffin, and Xavier Rhodes are all coming off under-the-radar seasons for a very, very, very underrated defense. Mike Zimmer's scheme helped Minnesota make dramatic improvements. The Vikings went 32nd to 11th in points allowed and 31st to 7th in pass defense. Oh, and Adrian Peterson finally returns to the lineup after a nearly year-long suspension. But that potential leap up the standings, well, it all depends on the progression of one Teddy Bridgewater, not including Brett Favre. He doesn't really count. Bridgewater appears to be Minnesota's first true franchise quarterback since Dante Culpepper. He went 6-6 six and six as a starter last year and completed 64.4% of his passes, the third best percentage by a rookie in NFL history. So how much will Peterson contribute? He hasn't taken a meaningful snap in about a year in the history for 30-plus-year-old running backs. It's very, very grim. Just 46 30-plus-year-old running backs have gone over 1,000 yards rushing, and AP will definitely become the 47th. But there have been just six times where a running back has gone over 1,500 yards rushing. Walter Payton and Tiki Barber did it twice, while Curtis Martin and Corey Dillon, they did it as well. Barber's 2005 season of 1,860 rushing yards, well, that's the most for a running back over 30. Even for backs who have gone over 1,400 yards, only four other backs besides the one I listed above have eclipsed that plateau. There's Barry Sanders, Priest Holmes, Warwick Dunn, and Thomas Jones. With all that being said, though, Peterson is a physical specimen that's rare for a running back. And with the progress that Bridgewater appears to be making, Peterson will see less instances where he'll see eight men in the box. As for me, I don't think he'll get to 1,500, 1,400 maybe, but I believe, you know, somewhere in between 1,200 to 1,400, that sounds about right. And speaking of those eight men in the box, there's no doubt in my mind that many teams early on are going to want to see if Bridgewater can beat them. Offensive coordinator Norv Turner, well, he did an outstanding job of catering his offense to Bridgewater's strengths. Bridgewater saw a lot of shotgun, and Turner had him make a lot of quick reads. Uh, Turner gets, you know, to add his power ground game with the return of Peterson now, and the offseason addition of speedster Mike Wallace, well, that allows Turner to implement more of his vertical passing game. All right, uh, before I get position by position, um, I got rankings below. Uh, in the description box, unit rankings, player rankings, I got numbers besides each of them. So, uh, yeah, make sure you check those out. If, if you got any gripes, let me know in the uh, comment section below. You know, um, where, where do you think the Vikings will land in the standings this season? So, uh, there's that. But position by position we go now. Let's talk about Bridgewater a little bit more. He started his first game in Week 3, led four fourth-quarter comebacks. His poise was very impressive and handled the adversity of a not-so-talented offense, I mean, superbly. And he got better and better as the year went along in terms of his presence in the pocket, accuracy downfield, and decision-making. But the one weakness is his arm strength, which could pose a problem with Wallace. But I think Bridgewater's, you know, his arm's good enough. In all, he threw 14 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. Obviously, the interception total is a bit high, but rookies make mistakes. We know this. Take Peyton Manning's rookie season as an example, 26 touchdowns and 28 interceptions it just comes with the territory. 35-year-old Sean Hill will be the backup. Uh, Mike Kafka and, and Taylor Heineke are battling for the third job. Just eight months after tearing his ACL, Peterson went out and posted the second-best rushing total in NFL history. Obviously, after the controversy involving the whipping of his son, he returns with different circum circumstances, but there's definitely some doubters out there. Uh, he's never been the best catching the football or in blitz pickup, but there's no doubt that AP is one of the best pure runners still in the game today. He's the most physical and violent runner I've seen since Earl Campbell. He has breakaway speed. His lateral agility is unbelievable. So, uh, I mean, he's still going to get it done. I, I think he'll be fine. Matt Asiata and Jarek McKinnon filled in for AP as he was settling his felony child abuse case. McKinnon is a quarterback turned running back and impressed during his rookie campaign where he averaged 4.8 yards per carry. He ran a 4.3840 at the Combine and is nicknamed Jet for a reason. Asiata is more of the goal line back, but he won't be needed there if Peterson stays on the field. I'm really excited to see how the receivers pan out. This may surprise some, at least to the casual fan, but 
I think Charles Johnson's the best of the bunch. Uh, Corderell Patterson and, and Wallace get all the pub, but I love Johnson's route running ability, his patience. Uh, he runs a sub 4 4 40 and is, has a near 40 inch vertical leap. Amazing to think, you know, he was on the Cleveland Browns practice squad. That was a team that needed receivers last year with all the shenanigans involving Josh Gordon. How can they let a talent like that just walk? Beats me. Wallace was acquired for a fifth round pick and could be the, you know, explosive receiver that was lacking in Turner's offense, as I was saying earlier. He doesn't have the best of hands, but you can't teach speed. Wallace is a burner. Honestly, uh, you know, I, I've kind of always thought he's been overrated, but he's a nice fit for the system, so he might be okay. Peterson is another guy with game breaking. Uh, uh, Patterson is another guy with game breaking speed, but was benched last year for his poor attention to detail as a route runner. Can he rebound from a disappointing sophomore campaign after, you know, honestly, a sensational rookie season? Jarius Wright is a solid slot guy. I like his hands, and there's fifth-round rookie Stephon Diggs as well. Tight end Kyle, Kyle Rudolph missed eight games due to a sports hernia, but can be a difference, difference maker if he stays on the field. He has soft hands for a big, massive target. Um, going to the offensive line now, you know, the, there's a huge head-scratcher with me with Matt Khalil. He's gone from a rookie pro bowler in 2012 to argue, arguably, honestly, might be the worst left starting tackle in the game. He had his knee scoped in the offseason and did improve down the stretch of his la of last year, but, I mean, he's been a huge letdown. I mean, come on. Uh, unfortunately, the other tackle, Phil Lodeholt, will miss the season after tearing his Achilles in a preseason game with Tampa. Um, that means, well, it seems like fourth-round rookie TJ Clemmings will be thrust right into the fire. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. John Sullivan is solid center. Uh, he's light on his feet, also strong enough to anchor against the defensive tackles. Not really overpowering. Uh, you, you can't leave him one-on-one -on -one against nose tackles. He did, uh, you know, well run blocking, even without AP. His quick feet allow him to pull and get to the second level with ease. Brandon Fusco, and it looks like either Joe Berger or Michael Harris will be the guards. Fusco is very underrated, very intelligent player. I actually like him a lot. Um, so, yeah, there's that. On to the defense we go. Zimmer's bunch saw seven new starters and improved by nearly nine points allowed. Outstanding job he did, honestly. I mean, seriously. I touched uh, a bit on them earlier, but Griffin and Floyd headlined the, the D-line. Uh, coming off a so-so rookie campaign, Floyd took a huge leap forward in 2014. Flourishing in Zimmer's defensive scheme, his improvement in technique helped him dominate opposing linemen. He has great quickness off the ball, recording four and a half sacks, five hits, and 20 hurries. Floyd is equally stout stopping the run. He uses his hands exceptionally well. A uh, really good football player. Griffin posted a career-high 12 sacks in 2014, although it did take him five years to finally put it all together. As a pass rusher, he has a good mix of power, length, technique, and speed. He likes to use the bull rush and plays with a high motor. As a run defender, he does a great job of playing down the line and squeezing down on cutback cut lanes. He's a very solid every-down player. Uh, Linval Joseph is no slouch either at the other defensive tackle spot, and Brian Robinson has always been unheralded during his stay in, in Minnesota. As for a backup to watch, I, I like Tom Johnson a little bit. So uh, there's the D-line. At linebacker, Barr hopes to raise the bar at his sophomore campaign. Ha, ha, ha. He underwent season-ending knee surgery in December, but he showed flashes of game-changing ability during his rookie season. His game-winning 27-yard force fumble returned for a touchdown during an overtime win against Tampa Bay is evidence of that. Uh, outstanding pass rusher in college and didn't do it too much his first season, but when he did, he showed outstanding first-step quickness uh, and just would speed around the corner and get to the quarterback. He also did a fantastic job on his blitzes through the A-gap. And run defense, uh, lightning fast, closing speed, great range to chase down the running back down along the perimeter and from behind. Did have some struggles in coverage. Didn't do it at much, didn't do it much at UCLA. It showed he's, he's you know, He's, he just needs experience. He's, he's too big and too athletic to not improve in that area. 32-year-old Chad Greenway agreed, uh, agreed to restructure his deal so he could return for a 10th season. In his prime, he was one of the best 4-3 outside linebackers in the game, and with his intelligence, he should be a good mentor for Barr and rookie second-rounder Eric Kendricks, who will start in the middle. Kendricks was Barr's roommate at UCLA. He has great instincts and his sideline-to-sideline -side range. 
kind of like his brother Michael in Philadelphia. I really like what I've seen from Gerald Hodges in the preseason. He'll, he'll be a solid backup, I think. Um, so those are the linebackers. In the secondary, I love Xavier Rhodes. I like him a lot. I have him ranked ninth in my quarterback rankings. He's got a very, very high ceiling, in my opinion. Uh, the one glaring thing that I noticed with Rhodes was his improved hand usage and his ability to press at the line of scrimmage. So when you mix that with his length and speed, he locks receivers down. He's got fluid hips, shadows opposing receivers very, very well. He's a physical and aggressive corner in space, but he did struggle in run defense in terms of forcing ball carriers uh, to go back to the middle. The Vikings are hoping that he and Trey Waynes will make up a formidable quarterback pair for the years to come. Waynes is lightning fast. He ran a 4-3-1-40 at the combine, can press, and his hips are very fluid. Uh, the drafting of Waynes allows Captain Munner Munnerlin to move to the slot where he's most comfortable. Um, but what we'll see if, if, if Waynes, you know, uh, we'll see if he does have some growing pains earlier on in the season. Um, so, yeah, there's that. All right. Safeties, Harrison Smith, Robert Blanton, I mean, they might be the most underrated pair of safeties in the league. I, I love Smith a lot. I, I like him a lot. He has great size, 6'2", 214, and at 26, there's still room for improvement. He's great, physical, uh, in-the-box kind of safety. He can drop back in coverage as well. Against the run, he might be the best in the business from the safety spot. He comes off blocks and lays the wood in the open field. In coverage, he's rangy and athletic. Tallied five interceptions a year ago. Uh, Blanton, very solid in man coverage. Does tend to struggle against the run, but, you know, he compliments Smith very, very well. You know, because Smith's more the run guy, Blanton's more the cover guy. Former All-Pro kicker uh, Blair Walsh was just 74.3% with his kicks last season. Jeff Locke took a step backwards as the punter. Corderell Patterson is still a dangerous kick returner despite his disappointing season. And Marcus Sherrills will be handling the punt return duties. You know, uh, the Vikings have a very, very, very legitimate shot at making the postseason. And it all depends on Bridgewater, I think. If, if he can really, really take that next step, that next leap to be... You know, not not necessarily be in the top 10 of quarterbacks, but maybe in the top 15. This is a playoff team. I really think so. Right now, you know, I have them penciled in at 9-7. and seven. I do not have them making the postseason. I have Dallas and Detroit getting the two wild cards in the NFC. I, you know, wish I could have gone more bolder, but uh, <laughs> um, I didn't. I, I went with Dallas and, and Detroit, but... Uh, Minnesota, man, their team definitely on the rise, definitely a team to watch out for in, in the next couple of years, especially with that defense. I mean, if that defense is going to be as good this year and, and the years to come, and if Bridgewater can develop, this is a team, uh, you know, that I'm going to have my eyes on the next couple of years. So um, this year, are they ready? Bridgewater second year? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, let me know in the comment section again, you know, what you guys think my prediction, my rankings, all that good stuff. Debate me. I love to debate. So let's do it. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter, at the Bitter Birds. I'm out of here. That's the Vikings preview. See you later.